All right. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, great to be here. And uh, thanks for the invite from KSAR. I'm good to see some familiar faces all around. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I figure we can just jump right in, um, you know, kind of start with the overall problem statement around, you know, what we're solving for and then diving a little bit deeper into the difference that we're making um, using, you know, LiDAR systems, the associated semiconductors, software, AI, to be able to help solve this holistic problem. And what that is, is that, you know, right now, today, uh, you know, there's 1.3 million lives that are lost on the road every year uh, due to vehicle accidents. And, you know, if you actually parse that out into the relevant statistics, it's kind of insane to be able to see that impact. You know, you actually match out, it's on the order of one in a hundred of us will tragically lose our lives in an accident. So on average, somebody in this room will lose their life at some point as a result of this. And the whole point is, is that this is an opportunity of something that's completely preventable. It's solvable. And, you know, I think we can do more good for the world than anything else uh, if we can be able to drive towards this very clear solution that needs to be able to happen. So that's the global impact opportunity that we have. And the thing is, you would think that with all of the advances in modern technology and modern vehicle technology, you would see these accident rates, you know, going down over the course of the past decade, you know, with advancement in safety and whatnot. But the crazy part is, is that not only have we not seen that trend where it stayed flat, it's actually ticked upwards, which is quite shocking. Um, it's something that is the last thing that you would expect. But you take a look at just the U.S. annual vehicle fatality statistics, and that's something that it becomes clearly evident. And you're like, okay, well, why? What's going on? Um, and the reality is, is that there are limitations of the technologies that are out there today in terms of how we can solve this problem collectively to be able to prevent accidents. Uh, prevent collisions and prevent deaths out on our roads. And this is the whole point in terms of the direct opportunity of what we're about and what we're trying to be able to solve for. So you take a look at the economic impact of this. And again, in just the U.S. alone, there's on the order of $1.3 trillion worth of economic costs when taking into account, you know, the first order direct costs of vehicle accidents, as well as the second order costs for example, hospitalizations and other factors that come into play. Um, and obviously, this starts adding up into multiple trillions on an annualized basis. So you can start thinking about, okay, wow, this is a very, very serious problem. We have to be able to directly address. It's right in front of us um, and goes to show. And of course, um, the number one driver of a lot of this cost is also, you know, ultimately manifests itself in the insurance side of things, which is sort of the hidden cost of safety that we all inevitably end up paying for um, in the U.S. in a mandatory capacity. Uh, on an annualized basis, you know, which is, of course, the outside of fuel, the number one ongoing cost uh, for your car. And the thing is, is that you take a look at studies, you know, from AAA, from IIHS and, and other things. And from an analysis, it's very unfortunate that even despite all the advancements from an AEB standpoint for, you know, automatic emergency braking and different kinds of collision avoidance technologies and capabilities, uh, you take a look and in 70% of scenarios, for example, even for just a study of pedestrian AEB alone, you know, these these fail in these systems. You generally over uh, hi at higher speeds and also at night. Um, so when you're talking above like 20, 30 miles an hour, um, we really need a step change in terms of assisted driving technologies to be able to make a true impact and save lives out on the road. So that's the opportunity that we have ahead of ourselves. And we can show this in a, in a couple of different examples. Um, the whole point is of what we're doing is to be able to provide this breakthrough new LiDAR technology to get out onto production consumer vehicles, to be able to make that difference and make that impact so that it gives a ground truth view and understanding of everything around you to be able to clearly know when to be able to come to a safe stop, uh, exactly how far away the objects are down to centimeter level precision. And with that, the results are pretty impressive. So you take a look at, you know, Luminar uh, LiDAR system and associated um, you know, software package AI engine that we have equipped on the vehicles. And, you know, you look at the equivalent kinds of vehicles uh, without these systems equipped. And, you know, we're, what we're going to do is take a look at a couple of, you know, relatively straightforward examples of something where you have, uh, you know, pedestrian dummies right in front of the car. Um, these are NCAP, uh, you know, rated dummies that you do during crash testing. But the thing is, is that um, the important part is, is that you're not just testing it up to 20 miles an hour, but 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, higher speeds, which is actually turns out where most of the fatal accidents end up happening. And you take a look at some of these different examples when it's equipped. And 
you know, the, the, the challenge with these, these current systems is they're not oftentimes not able to come to a safe stop, even in broad daylight uh, for these different conditions. At night, it becomes even more challenging and difficult. And the beauty of the LIDAR system is that it's able to see and understand it perfectly in all these kinds of conditions, whether it's bright sunlight outside shining into it, whether it's pitch black at night, uh, even for a challenging case like a tire out of the road, or, um, you know, someone that pops out in front of a, a parked car, you know, which is, again, a very, very challenging scenario that, um, you know, thousands of lives are lost to uh, every year. So in just the, the U.S. alone. So you take a look at all these different kinds of examples of what we can do. And this is how we can really step up the game in terms of, you know, preventing accidents, increasing safety on vehicles. And this is really um, a fundamental distinction. And we'll talk a little bit more about this around uh, how the focus of what this technology can be applied for around the safety angle, as opposed to just the autonomous driving angle um, that all of you guys know all too well about. Um, so that's the overall goal is to democratize safety and make a difference and make that exact impact all around, bring it around to everyone. But I think, you know, what's in the back of everyone's mind is around the existing part of the industry. Is it around autonomous vehicles more generally of, you know, what, what's happened across over the course of the past decade? Uh, you know, there was all these promises, all these things around all these different company systems. You know, you look at the Waymo, Cruise, Argo, Aurora, Zooks, Emotional, um, the whole point and the focus of what the vast majority of the effort, time, money, man hours of resources has gone into is about replacing drivers for the autonomous vehicle world for robo taxi systems, as opposed to being able to enhance drivers, make that difference, make that impact and be able to enable them in terms of the capabilities. And that's really the fundamental distinction of what we're doing with, uh, with Luminar more generally. Uh, is that we're taking out these huge roof racks full systems, you know, all these sensors and supercomputer in the trunk and everything that's normally required to be able to run these things to try and replace drivers, got, got it down from these $100,000 systems down to, you know, $1,000 integrated package that can go integrate seamlessly into the roof line of the vehicles to be able to enable uh, really two key sets of functionalities. One is um, from a safety perspective of dramatically better um, assisted driving, you know, and safety systems on the vehicle. And two is autonomy under more constrained scenarios, for example, highway scenarios, um, that is more achievable in the near term. And you take a look back to the same things that I've been saying about, you know, the right strategy and approaches, same thing today as what I was saying back in 2016, 2017, it's a very, very challenging problem. This will be solved for, this has the same kind of technology that's required to be able to enable robo taxis in one day. Um, but in the meantime, the goal is, is to enable the existing um, four and a half trillion a year production vehicle industry um, that consumers drive, you know, every day and will continue to be buying for any foreseeable future until driving is outlawed 100 years from now. So, <laughs> uh, but, um, so the whole point is, is we're transforming again from this to this. And you see the difference. You see the impact. It's actually... You can see our technology seamlessly integrated into the roof line of the vehicle. And this is the kind of thing that should be driving the modern vehicle experience and modern vehicle safety. You know, you take a look at an example of some leaders like, uh, like Volvo, um, you know, who's, who's here in the audience as, as well. Um, and uh, I know, I see Odgard here going to give a, uh, I'm sure a talk later about uh, the kinds of capabilities that, uh, that can be delivered. But it's just amazing to see the transformation of what's possible when it comes to these vehicles. And you know, we're, we're very excited for this first launch. It's the first uh, global scale launch that we'll have, um, you know, starting uh, and ramping up mid next year. Uh, next up, um, yeah, you have like the Polestar example. Again, just like incredible vehicle design. Um, you have Psyche, a uh, large automaker in China um, that, that we're collaborating with and uh, have designed in, again, similar kind of system into there. And, you know, we have dozens of, of partners and ecosystems, but just a few different examples showing the opportunity what we can do again about enhancing the driver preventing accidents enabling autonomy in more constrained scenarios and getting this out on roads and you know th this is something that we've had an incredible amount of traction for and are proud to be able to say that we are now planned into over 20 production vehicle models around the globe and something that we're, we're incredibly proud of and working closely with our automaker partners to be able to have that opportunity to democratize safety to be able to prevent accidents, to be able to make that impact all around. And again, something that I think we can be, you know, incredibly proud of. So 
what does that manifest itself as? Well, uh, in aggregate, uh, we have now signed um, over three and a half billion of production contracts, you know, with automakers. Uh, we're adding on the order of about a billion um, so far this year and have a direct opportunity to be able to uh, continually scale that up exponentially um, in our models and forecasts. Uh, we're estimating around uh, 60 billion of contracts by the end of the decade, uh, which will be a direct opportunity for us to be able to deliver across the board in the industry. So that represents, um, you know, we should have around, and, and again, this is hopefully very conservative uh, in terms of the opportunity, uh, just three to 4% market penetration at the end of the decade uh, roughly represents about five and a half billion of revenue, two and a half billion EBITDA, and a 60 billion forward looking order book for the contracts that we have. So uh, that's as we scale up and continue to scale up in terms of the number of production vehicle models. Um, but again, the beauty is, is that we have these long-term contracts uh, with automakers. I mean, you guys all know this kind of coming from the industry is that when you get designed into these, these vehicles, um, you know, very, very high barrier to entry, but also very high barrier to exit. And that's in really important from just a business standpoint, a business viability standpoint of being able to have that long-term visibility. Um, so in the meantime, you know, we've uh, continued to be able to build out you know, production facilities uh, around the world and, and a robust supply chain by vertically integrating, you know, different uh, co parts and components from the semiconductor level up. Uh, you know, Luminar makes all of our own semiconductors. We actually have our own semiconductor design division in-house of about 100 engineers on that um, out of the, you know, on the order of a thousand uh, full-time and equivalent resource that we have uh, throughout Luminar. And uh, built out our, uh, our factory as well in uh, Monterey, Mexico, uh, which is the first uh, major launch. That's a 100 million factory that can scale up to around 250,000 um, tetras per year. So about, you know, um, on the order of 250 million uh, to start per year to start about, you know, which is, uh, which is great to be able to serve uh, these production vehicle models. And again, you know, folks like Volvo, Mercedes, and other, other partners are, you know, a part of this um, that are continuing to be able to scale out. Uh, we've continued to build a robust ecosystem of all these partners to be able to move towards this vision, this plan, and what we're able to do more generally, which is something that that I think is is pretty exciting. Uh, it's not just us that's a part of this journey and mission, uh, but companies across the globe and some of the most meaningful ones, um, you know. And of course, uh, not even just the automakers, but even technology partners. Um, like we're very, we're very proud to be a part of uh, what not too far down the road, uh, you know, NVIDIA's um, platform and, and ecosystem as the kind of exclusive provider of uh, the LiDAR systems for Hyperion. So that's something that uh, as they get designed in, you know, we get designed in with it. It's uh, incredible uh, partnership along with other other kinds of uh, technology and ecosystem players uh, that we've been able to uh, to collaborate with over the years to be able to make all of this successful. So that's... Um, that's a really important part of the story and, you know, not just going at it alone. Um, you know, and again, also just highlighting a couple of other, other things and, and examples of, uh, great ones is that, uh, when you look at the optigration, freedom photonics, black forest engineering, those are, you know, semiconductor subsidiaries, um, that we have from when we designed it from the chip level up, that's how we got the orders of magnitude, greater performance while, you know, reducing the cost also by orders of magnitude to be able to get this designed in and, um, achieving the what's required the performance required for the next level safety as well as autonomy on vehicles um and at the same time when we're talking about you know continuing on with the mission and vision even beyond the core lidar technology and software um that's enabled on these vehicles you know we announced earlier like a partnership for example with with swiss re um you know earlier to address that economic impact that 1.3 trillion per year in the u.s alone um, which, uh, by even launching and, and collaborating with Swiss Re, uh, which is, uh, what the second largest reinsurer in the world, uh, to be able to have an insurance package that already off the bat for every vehicle equipped with Luminar, uh, will be able to have, you know, substantially reduced about like 20%, uh, reduced cost, um, uh, from an in uh, annual recurring insurance standpoint for consumers, as well as offering discounts, uh, directly to OEMs. And the ultimate goal of that is to be able to make it such that, a LiDAR can be provided, you can realize the benefits and ultimately be at no net cost um, for everyone and accessible to everyone in the world. So that's part of the whole objective. So very exciting. Thank you again to the, uh, to the partners involved in driving this. And uh, there's many more that uh, are not on this page, but it's an exciting first start. 
So what does this all roll up to? Well, um, you know, at Luminar, and, you know, we're very excited to be able to have the partners join in on this. We have this grand 100-year vision uh, in terms of the opportunity for what's ahead of us, is to be able to save as many as 100 million lives and 100 trillion hours of people's time out on the road over the next 100 years. That's what everything that we do at Luminar rolls up to. That's the mission. That's what drives everyone every day to be able to make this impact. And if we do it right, if we're able to eliminate the majority of vehicle accidents, which we know we can, um, you know, it's the, the feasibility is there. It's just a matter of being able to get this onto as many vehicles as possible out over the course of the, um, the coming uh, decade, uh, you know, to two decades. And we'll be able to ultimately achieve this goal and reverse the trend of increasing accidents to decreasing accidents and hopefully have it approach zero um, at some point. But, you know, you're never going to be able to solve everything, but I think it's it's very clear for, you know, 70, 80, 90 percent, you know, it's uh, we're, we're able to be able to solve for. It. And it just takes the majority to be able to make this this impact. But it just shows the broad scale. I mean, 100 million, that's uh, like on the order of a third of the U.S. population. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty meaningful and impactful. So, um, again, uh, thank you to everyone involved in the journey. Um, amazing work uh, that you guys are able are doing and are able to do at uh, at Applied. Uh, again, I think all part of the same mission about being able to help make an impact, save lives, and doing so in, in different ways, of course, to be able to achieve that same objective. Um, very excited for the future. You guys are doing some um, really impressive stuff and uh, very much looking forward to what's ahead uh, with what you guys have and what we have all together as we tackle this huge problem for the industry. So thank you, everyone. We'll see you around here in a bit.